how is everyone today? Well, as you can see, we are not out any place. I'm not showing you anything uh, cool that I'm doing. Um, so today's video is something a little bit different. The reason that I'm doing this is because we are mourning the loss of a three-year-old African elephant, Fitz, from the Louisville Zoo. So what had happened is he had contracted a virus that's called EHV, otherwise known as endotheliotropic herpes virus. And uh, to the best of our knowledge, his, uh, they think that most elephants are born with this condition and it just stays dormant for, some, for many. And then if it does present itself, if they're young enough, meaning that they're still nursing with their mother, they can usually survive. However, with Fitz being three years old, he, uh, he's obviously passed the, he's been weaned from his mother. He isn't drinking milk and not getting those antibodies. So they say usually if a uh, elephant contracts that, once they've been weaned, they've only got a 20 to 30% survival rate um, should they contract it. And uh, unfortunately for Fitz, you know, like I said, he was already, he was already weaned. Um, so let me give you a quick rundown, I guess, of what had happened. So on June the 25th of uh, 2023, Punch, that is the Asian elephant, or the matriarch of the elephant group, she alerted uh, staff to something being wrong with, with, uh, with Fitz. And then on uh, Tuesday, June 27th, they uh, drew some blood and sent it out to the Smithsonian to be analyzed. On Wednesday, the June the 28th, it was discovered that uh, he did in fact have an active case of EEHV. Um, and uh, on Friday, everything seemed to be going well. They had been posting updates pretty much daily saying, you know, what was going on. He was still eating and everything was all right. But on Friday night at 11 p.m., he, uh, he apparently passed away. So, I wanted to do a video just because I've followed Fitz ever since he was born. And I wanted to kind of, you know, give a look back on his life and uh, celebrate everything that he meant through me. And you can see his life through my lens as I've seen him. So, let's uh, take a look at his story. All right, so we're going to actually start from the beginning. Um, Fitz was actually born on August the 2nd in 2019, and he was a whopping 275 pounds when he was born. So, you know, as you can imagine, elephants are large animals. So uh, he's a big baby. You know, he weighs more than I do <laughs> now, even though I'm a, you know, kind of a big boy. <laughs> um, and either way, so when he was first born for the first month, uh, they were letting him get acclimated to his mother and his habitat and all that before being shown to the public. And about a month later after he was born is when they first presented him to the public. So my first clips are actually from the first weekend that he was shown to the public. And I think I visited on September the 8th of 2019. So like I said, he was approximately a month old, about a month and a week. And, uh, you know, it's just really, really cool to see him out in his habitat. Everybody's excited about his birth because it's the first baby elephant that we've had in quite a while. And uh, so everybody's just excited. And uh, also one thing to note, um, as we kind of progress through this timeline, kind of keep tabs on his height in comparison to his mother. Specifically, like his mother's stomach is kind of the easiest way to do it. And you can kind of see how he grows up uh, over time. Um, and just how curious he is. I mean, he's so full of life and, you know, he had so much going for him. So in these first clips, um, this was back before I was vlogging. So these are all unseen before. So until we get to about 2022, um, these are all going to be brand new. Nobody's ever seen them before. So, well, let's take a look at his uh, first weekend that he was available to the public. And we can see how little and tiny and innocent that he was. Look at the baby. Oh my word. She is so. Is it a big boy or girl? 
a boy? It's a boy. It's a little boy. It's a little boy like you. So if you notice, there's these little yellow ribbons kind of everywhere, and it's surrounding certain obstacles in its habitat. And the reason they have that is so Fitz can actually identify different things and avoid running into them. So after a couple months, these will go away, and you'll notice that in future clips.
prior to these, this introduction to the next clip. So I visited them again about a week later because, you know, it's not really a big secret. I was very smitten with, uh, with Fitz. I thought he was adorable and I was, I mean, I was completely infatuated and enamored with him, you know, from, uh, from the get go. Obviously I like animals, so I get pretty attached to animals that I get to see a lot and I just, I just love them. So, okay. So here we are one week later, it's September the 14th of 2019. And, uh, one thing to note in these clips is you actually get to see sort of the, uh, the routine that the elephants have when they're coming in and out of the habitat. So in the beginning, he was only out for about two hours each day. So as soon as the zoo opened, they'd bring him out at 10 o'clock, and then at noon, he would usually go back into, into his indoor habitat out of public viewing, just to get kind of used to, I guess, all the, uh, all the uh, onlookers, <laughs> uh, sort of say. So, all right, here's that second visit. Two week or a, one week later from the first one.
that. to the next sequence of clips and uh, so the next visit that I had after this second visit was another month later it was actually on October the 6th of 2019 so at this point Fitz was three months old you know as you're looking through the clips you kind of notice that he's you know starting to learn how to use his trunk and picking up random things from the ground and just exploring his area so Thank you. 
So around this time frame, I was actually chatting with one of uh, Fitz's caretakers, and he had mentioned that he was already up to 345 pounds to 350 pounds. Starting to grow pretty quick. Alright, so leading into these next clips, we're at two months later when I visit again, and that is actually on December the 14th of 2019. So in this upcoming clip, like he's four months out effectively at this point, um, I skipped November probably because I was busy with Thanksgiving and such, so we didn't get to see him in November. So in this week's sequence, you can actually see him playing with water and getting into other hijinks. Um, you can kind of see how close he stays to his mother as well, you know, so in the beginning, course being a newborn you know the only real relationship that he knows is his mother and his caretakers so he follows mom around pretty closely he doesn't venture too far off you know as time goes on you slowly see that start to change a little bit as he gets a little bit more independence and more confident um, in itself um, so here we go
Here you find Fitz following the routine of his mother, and in future clips you will also see this continue as far as his behavior goes. The reason being is uh, they'll throw out lettuce to Mickey, and it is to basically give her some exercise and uh, reduce the possibility of her having some GI issues. So in the past she's had some uh, gastrointestinal issues, and uh, they do this to uh, help that. And, you know, he just likes to follow whatever his mother's doing. So whatever she does, he tends to do the same. Alright, this leads us into our next sequence of clips, and it's going to be another three months from this previous clips that we had, and it's actually March the 1st of 2020. So at this point, Fitz is seven months old. Um, took a little bit of a break for winter, probably because it was cold. And uh, in these clips you can see, you know, Fitz is still getting the hang of things. He's starting to learn what he likes and doesn't like. You can see him playing with a rock. and. Uh, you know, he's starting to grow up and you're starting to see a discernible difference from the beginning. So now he's starting to get tall enough to where he can't walk directly underneath of his mother and stuff along those lines. So just take notice of that and let's uh, bask in all the cuteness that is fits. Thank you. 
brings us to the next sequence of clips. So in these, it's another four months later. It is July the 3rd of 2020. And at this point he is 11 months old. So he's one month short of uh, being a full year old. Um, you already know what happened around this time frame. So this is basically when the pandemic had happened. Um, and then pretty much the whole world shut down effectively. So the zoo was not any different. You know, they closed down the zoo to, to visitors. And, uh, you know, eventually they let people come back in and we were able to come visit the animals again. So I think this was my first visit that I was able to come back. I don't remember exactly when they reopened, but uh, again, you can kind of see the, the progress that Fitz is making and, you know, him playing with various things. So let's take a look at that. At this point, we take another bit of a break. It looks like I didn't visit again for another seven months for whatever reason. So in this next visit, it is actually February the 27th of 2021. 
Um, so at this point he is uh, a year and a half out effectively. Um, again, you can see the progress that he's making and he's also, you know, made a, he's grown significantly, right? So uh, at this point you can also see that he's starting to eat some solids because he's starting to get into some of the, uh, the straw or the hay um, that his mother also eats. So enjoy these. So at this point, there's a lot of time that has gone by before I made my next visit. So I guess I just got busy with life and uh, was doing other things instead of visiting my little friend at the zoo. So our next visit is actually about, it's over a year later, and it's at May 22nd of 2022. So at this point, Fitz is two years and nine months old. Um, this is also when I started to vlog. So at this point going forward, you, if you've watched my previous videos, you will have seen these clips before. Um, however, for the purposes of this video, I'm not going to show you everything that I had. I'm just going to pick out the highlights and just leave it at that. Just so, you know, if you want to see the whole thing, watch some of my prior videos and you'll see the entirety of uh, the coverage that I have. Um, but again, you know, he's getting a lot bigger and uh, he's almost to his mom's ears at this point as far as his height. So he's definitely getting significantly larger, as you would expect, being a year later. And you know, you can also see his love for logs. If you've ever heard me comment in my previous videos, you'll notice that he was always enamored with logs. Anything <laughs> that is tree related, he seems to like. Um, so it's really cute to watch. So let's take a look at all that. They're coming in. Fitz is over there playing in his pool. And he shows his butt. Thank you. 
Baby, I want to help with mommy. I like to help with dogs, but I don't know. Fitz is grabbing mom's tusk. He's apparently messing with mom's mouth. In this next sequence of clips, it is actually on June the 19th of 2022, so he is two years and ten months at this point. Um, it looks like he still might actually be nursing at this point, so he hasn't completely weaned from his mother. And you can see him playing in a hole and uh, still playing with some of those sticks. That's actually fits in there with uh, Asian elephants. No, ma'am. So I guess they've gotten acquainted. So when Fitz was first born, they had him separated, and he was just with his mom, Mickey. And uh, they stayed apart for a little while. So now they're all together. Sure, if Fitz is still nursing or not. Kind of looks like he is. Sort of. It looks like Fitz is doing something on the ground. Babies are always doing something funny. Very seldom do I see him laying down. Actually, I don't know that I've ever seen him laying down really. It's pretty cool though. Oh, it's in a hole. It's cool to see them hanging out like this. So she kind of helps out with fits too, it looks like. who is still enamored with sticks. Oh, look at the baby. Yeah, Fitz is getting big, isn't he? These following clips are going to be about a month later from that last visit. So it is July the 3rd of 2022. Um, so he's two years old and 11 months, so he's almost three. And uh, you can see him eating some hay and some straw. some food with mom.
Fitz is giving himself a dust bath too. And here we are at the last sequence of clips that I have of Fitz. This was actually the last visit that I had with him. Um, and it was in October the 22nd of 2022. And I was there for the pumpkin smash. And uh, at this point he was three years and two months old. Here we get to see a new toy that I had never seen before. And that looks like a, it appears to be like some sort of a ball. So let's enjoy some footage of him you know, playing with that ball and then he gets a little bit of pumpkin as well. Fitz is over playing with the ball. Let's get some bump up. Well, there you have it. That is all of the footage that I have of Fitz throughout his life. So crazy as it is, I was actually planning on going up to the zoo on Father's Day weekend, but then, you know, I got busy and I basically talked myself out of it just because I had plans with my father. And, uh, you know, I was just tired, so I didn't go up there. But, you know, looking back now, I'm like, you know, I could have seen him at least one last time before this had happened, you know, so that was about two weeks before, roughly. Um, you know, I just think it would have given me more closure, I guess, um, to the whole, to the whole ordeal. Um, so I'm still, you know, dealing with the shock from the whole thing and, uh, you know, still kind of processing it, I guess. You know, reflecting back, it's kind of amazing how attached one can become to, you know, well, an elephant effectively in this particular case, or any animal for that matter, and that, that I, you know, I've never been able to pet them or, you know, feed them or anything like that. It's only I've been able to watch from afar, but yet I still feel this strong connection to, and, you know, now I feel this great loss because he's no longer there anymore. Um, you know, for me, going to the zoo is one of those peaceful things. It's a way for me to de-stress, look at really, really cute animals, and, you know, it just helps me not think about other things in my life that may be stressing me out. Um, you know, I wish I would have visited more, you know. My intention when I first started, you know, going to the zoo, he was the reason I actually got my season pass initially to the zoo. And my hope was to go up there basically monthly and kind of document his at least his first year of life like pretty much every month and we can kind of see his progress obviously that didn't happen for a multitude of reasons um but you know i tried my best effort and then you know sometimes life gets in the way and sometimes a pandemic gets in the way so you know i kind of envisioned that we would get to see him grow up and uh you know maybe have babies of his own and you know just see his whole life and unfortunately it got uh, cut tragically short that, that nobody anticipated. Um, 
I can only say that I really, really feel for his caretakers and all the staff at the zoo because I can't imagine what they're going through. I mean, I know how I kind of take, took the news, or, or I should say I am taking the news. Um, I mean, I'm not going to lie. It, uh, it really made me cry. I don't get, you know, teared up about a lot of things, but, you know, when it comes to the stuff that I love, you know, I care about it deep, you know, I care about those things deeply. And it made me really, really sad. I mean, I was kind of at a loss. And, man, you know, even going forward, I know whenever I visit the zoo, I'm going to always remember Fitz and the fact that I can't see him anymore, and that's going to hurt. You know, um, and that's something that all of us have got to deal with. Um, or, you, you know, you got that, you can deal with it in all aspects of life. But, I mean, you know, not to be preachy, but it just goes to show you that, you know, you want to spend as much time as you can with your loved ones and, uh, you know, because really nobody knows how long anybody's life is. Tomorrow is never guaranteed. I know that sounds cliche and it, you know, it's said a lot, but I mean, the reality is nobody does know. So you just got to take value and, you know, spend as much time with the loved ones that you have and doing the things that you enjoy. Um, you know, I know a lot of people are, are hurting forfeits and other situations that are like his. Well, in the end, I hope that uh, Fitz was able to be surrounded by, you know, his caretakers and the people that he loved him. Uh, I know that the zoo did say that Punch and Mickey um, both were able to see him afterwards, so they were aware. I'm going to miss him a lot. I know that. Um, so in closing, I'm going to kind of show you um, his memorial that they have at the zoo that I visited about I don't know, half a week later um, after his death. And we'll also take a quick look at Mickey. Um, so she was in her yard and I did get to see her briefly um, at my visit to his memorial. So I'm going to definitely miss the little guy immensely. But hopefully this gives you a little peek back at his life, at least through my lens. And hopefully that brings some peace and enjoyment to some folks. So. Um, you know, till next time. you dearly little one.